sometimes it's really sunny and sometimes it's not. So um, it might be weird, it might not. Either way, I'm happy you're here. And I'm happy to talk about making immune boosting remedies from your kitchen cabinet. And we are going to be making fire cider. Have any of you made fire cider before? If you have, definitely set it in the chat. Also, as we're going through this workshop, there's a Q&A down at the bottom. So if you hit that Q&A button, I can answer you as best as I can in the middle of the workshop. I will do my darndest. Um, so far, all right. <laughs> so yeah, if you've made fa fire cider before, go ahead and let me know. I hesitated on calling this workshop a fire cider workshop because as I was putting it together, I was being evacuated due to smoke and lack of power due to the wildfires here in Oregon. And the last thing I wanted to do was bring fire into my world. So I figured we'd talk about it being immune boosting remedies from your kitchen cabinet, which it also is. So I wanted to take a little bit of time and talk about some gratitude and a little bit of the history of fire cider. So. Fire cider has been a remedy that's been around and used for hundreds, if not thousands of years. It's basically using food as medicine, that some of the food are herbs, herbs can be food, it's really, really great. But back in the 70s, around the time I was born, maybe even a little bit earlier, this amazing woman who's now known as the grandmother of herbalism today. She's magical and if you're ever fortunate to be in your presence, you are really going to be a blessed being. But her name is Rosemary Gladstar. And Rosemary has been a huge catalyst into waking people up to the benefits of using plants as medicine these days um, and helping to like get these long-standing traditions happening and out to the people. And she's been doing this since the 70s, calling this particular formula or recipe fire cider. And then along comes this little company a few years ago called Shire City Herbals that wanted to trademark the term fire cider. And they began going after all kinds of little herbalists that were on Etsy or selling it in their little community or what have, or, what have you that were making their own fire cider and giving it to others. And they would give them cease and desist letters <laughs> and say, you can't use that term fire cider. And thankfully, a few of those herbalists were like, oh, heck, no, you don't. Fire cider's been along, around way longer than you. So they went through a long court battle with Rosemary Gladstar, Nicole Telkis of Wildflower School Botanical Medicine, Mary Blue from Pharmacy Herbs, and Kathy Langlier of Herbal Revolution. These ladies came together and fought it out against this company and their fancy highfalutin lawyers. And and it's a really great thing to say that as of about a year ago now, you can now use the term fire cider. So they had a little, a whole thing called tradition, not trademark. Like fire cider is a tradition. Why are we trademarking traditions? Anyways, I wanted to just let that be out there because those women are amazing. And I'm really grateful that they're standing up for tradition. So uh, let me get back in here, and none of you have made fire cider, so that's really cool. Fire cider is a really warming remedy that you can make, hence the term fire cider. It's really great for digestion. It's an amazing immune system stimulant. It can be taken, like, if you know your friends and family are starting to get sick, that's a really good time to start taking your fire cider. You can, like, just take a little shot of it from time to time. That's something that I do. Or you can use it as a marinade for a dish. You can use it um, as a salad dressing because you'll see here in a moment, the main ingredient to fire cider is the apple cider vinegar. So um, oil and vinegar, but you're gonna be able to make it how you like it. That's my mission. I'm gonna give you a basic structure of how to make fire cider in this class. And then we're going to talk about a lot of different herbs that you could or could not add to your fire cider. So did any of you here get an email where I sent out a shopping list? I'm learning all kinds of new things technology right now because I really, really love to teach about herbalism. And 
with COVID, I can't really do it in my local town. And I'm in such a tiny little mountain community that the most I can get at a time is like 20 people. So it's really great to be able to have this ability to share it with you live still. Um, but I want, oh, yay, Melissa, you got the shopping list. Totally cool that you didn't get the stuff in time. You're going to learn a lot here anyways. It's just fun to know if anybody's there like with a jar in hand making stuff with me or not because when I teach this class in person it's a lot of fun because everybody has the most beautiful jars to share and it's just cool to see what people pick to put in their own fire cider versus what other people pick to put in theirs so um, I'm really glad to hear that you got the emails because that means I'm starting to learn things in the land of technology. And now you can learn things in the land of herbal medicine. So let's do this and get down to it. And give me one moment. We are going to watch me navigate my computer. <laughs> and then we are going to make fire cider. And the main ingredient in fire cider is apple cider vinegar, um, which is amazing for your digestive system. It really helps to get the enzymes to break down all of the food you put into your body. And it happens to be a really, really great menstruum, which is like a carrier in the world of herbalism that helps to extract the medicinal benefits from a lot of the other ingredients I'm about to share with you. So give me one more moment. I wanna, um, I wanna get the chat up so I can see if you're trying to chat with me. Yay. Kinda doing, doing it proper, teaching you guys how to do these things. That's why I have her. You knew this though, right, Melissa? <laughs> Um, hold on, I'm going to do this. And I promise once I get through this little section, the class will be nothing but fun from there. Um, so apple cider vinegar, um, it's the jam. The other main ingredient in this is honey. And if you are fortunate to have access to local raw honey, that's totally how you want to get it at least raw at minimum, because once they heat and pasteurize your honey, it loses a lot of the phytochemicals like the propolis, which can act as a great cancer fighting agent. And then it loses a lot of the other really great benefits like the vitamin B6 and the iron and the manganese. Um, honey is also used in this remedy because it's a wonderful antioxidant and a great preservative. So once you make your fire cider, like I'm pretty sure I've sipped on fire cider from two or three years ago and you're a-okay with that. And honey's yummy. So it's really, really great to sweeten your fire cider because as we go along, you're gonna see that we're gonna be using some hot ingredients and some various flavors. So honey just, makes the a spoonful of honey, makes the medicine go down. <laughs> so those are two primary ingredients, but they're not gonna come until later. So first we will chat about ginger. I love ginger. Anybody else love ginger? It's good stuff. There's a big old hunk of it. And you can use fresh or dried ginger if you have it on hand right now. Get yourself a jar and start tossing it in there because ginger is an amazing immune system stimulant. It's really, really warming. It warms you from your belly on down, which is why you'll find it a lot in Indian foods and um, in curry dishes, things like that. It's a fantastic circulatory stimulant, which is gonna mean that if you're, we're heading into the cold season and if you get like, cold fingers and cold toes regularly, or you're somebody that's often wearing a big cozy hoodie with a scarf wrapped around you because you're cold, you wanna get more ginger in your life and this whole fire cider recipe um, because it's promoting the flow of blood to your extremities, which is going to help warm you up in those departments. Um, it's a great antibacterial, it's a great antiviral, and it's absolutely yummy. So it's so easy. I'm going to just take some chopped up ginger. Tanya was a rock star and chopped it for me. And it's going into my jar of soon to be fire cider. Um, it doesn't have to be grated. It doesn't have to be um, 
shredded, peeled, any of that jazz, because you're eventually going to be straining that part out. Plus the dirt from the earth has got a lot of great minerals for you that we miss out on because we're so hyper conscious of having the cleanest, prettiest produce everywhere. But that dirt is good. <laughs> so ginger is a really, really great starting point. And then horseradish root. For those of the, you that don't know, horseradish is huge and it's dense. And I feel like I could bop you on the head right there with it. If you were in person, I might. <laughs> but you're not, so you're lucky. Um, it's just such a crazy root. It's so dense and powerful. It's no wonder why it's called horseradish, because it looks like it's got the power of a horse. But if you think about when you eat horseradish, maybe your eyes might water up a little bit, or maybe your nose starts to run a little bit. Well, that's because it's a decongestant. It's going to take all that stuffy nasal passage stuff going on and just help it kind of um, flow, decongest you. Uh, it's going to be great as an immune system stimulant, also very warming, also pumps up that circulation and ramps up your digestion. And for those of you that don't know, our gut health is directly correlated to the health of our immune system and our brain. So, um, it's no wonder that all of these great foods and herbs that we're talking about are fantastic for your digestion and your immune system. Uh, oh, I'm gonna put my horseradish in. Again, I love the horseradish flavor. So I want to encourage you as you listen to this that you can put as little as you want or as more, little or literal, a little or a lot of whatever ingredient that makes your taste buds happy. Because if your taste buds aren't happy, this medicine isn't going to work because you're never going to use it. So keep that in mind when you learn to make your own herbal medicine. Super important piece. I love horseradish. So I'm putting a lot of fresh horseradish root into my jar. You can also use a powder if that's what works best for you right now. I know horseradish root isn't always the easiest to find. So onions. Onions are amazing. They're so yummy. They make some people cry. They don't make me cry. They make me smile. They're really good. Um, it's also a wonderful respiratory decongestant. So that's kind of also what is going on, if you think about it, when you're crying from cutting your onions, does your nose get a little runny? Like suddenly, I mean, sorry to talk about snot, but snot's real, we all have it. Um, it just starts running a little bit more. If it was thick, probably not as thick. Um, you can take onions and slice them so they've got that beautiful round open juicy circle going down and you can put a thin layer of cloth or flannel or some kind of cotton whatever you may have and put it on the back of somebody where their lungs are if they're super congested um, and let that sit there for a while and that will help alleviate a lot of that congestion. It's really really cool. Um, it's important to use the cloth though, especially when somebody has very sensitive skin because onions are hot and they can really cause a lot of redness and irritation. And when you see redness on your skin, it's a sign of heat and inflammation. And you don't wanna do that to anybody. You want them to feel better, not worse. Um, the onions are also in this because they have a lot of antioxidants a lot of antibacterial properties, and they're really rich in sulfur, which helps to boost the immune system, which totally makes me wanna go sit in a nice relaxing hot spring right now and just smell sulfur as it heals my body and mind. One of my favorite hot springs places was just involved in the fires, so I hope to go back there soon and help them rebuild. Anyways, I love onions. Lots of onions going into my fire cider. And I'll tell you guys, I do have access to a, a more direct recipe. So if you're somebody who really likes to follow a recipe, I have one of those on my blog at mountainmels.com. Check out the blog, search for fire cider. It's there. Me personally, what I love about fire cider is that you get to get so creative. Like I'm a horrible baker. I don't follow instructions very well. <laughs> I'm very much like, I do it my way. Um, and you can do that with your fire cider and you can be very specific. And as you're doing it, I want to remind you to do one really important thing 
that I'm not doing today, but I think you'll be happy if you do. And that's to write down how much of what you put in your fire cider. I'm not doing it because I've made tons and tons of fire cider. And at this moment, I don't really care if I replicate a recipe or not. But you may absolutely love the fire cider you make today or tomorrow or whenever you get the chance to, and you want to try and do it again, and you'll have no idea how much of what you put in there, and you can't replicate that recipe, and it's a super bummer. So that's something I did a lot in my beginning days of learning about herbalism, and I think you'll be really happy if you just write things down and you can play with it later. So onions, <laughs> recipes write them, all that fun stuff. Garlic, I love garlic. Garlic is so amazing for so many different things in your body. It's like, if, if there were one like thing in the food world that I thought everybody needed to continuously eat tons and tons and tons of, it's garlic. It's an amazing antiviral, like super amazing. So eat your garlic, because I don't know if you're aware, but there's a crazy virus going around our world right now. Keep your body ready. <laughs> that's, that's what I've got to say in short on that. Um, it's also a great antibacterial. It's a wonderful circulatory stimulant. The good news is that with this fire cider recipe, you do not have to mince and dice and chop your garlic all the way. You can just peel it or not peel it, but do smash it. Like, Give it a good pounding with a jar, whatever, whatever you need, because that's going to break open the actual like body of, of the clove of garlic and release those juices so that the apple cider vinegar can then better extract all of that medicine from the garlic. So garlic loving junkie here. Um, if we were close, you probably wouldn't want to smell my breath, but that's okay. You might not anyways. Um, <laughs> Um, a sub for garlic. Oh, Kathy, great question. If you are allergic gar to garlic, do you know if you're allergic to all alliums or just garlic? And you don't have to put it in there. That's another thing to recognize. Onions are okay, good. You can up the onions. You could, um, we're gonna be talking about a lot of different antiviral and antibacterial herbs throughout the rest of this class. So you could substitute anything in this recipe. That's what's fun about it. If it is not for your taste buds, don't do it. If you're allergic to it, obviously don't do it. And you can just play with other, other ones that we're talking about and maybe add a little more. Garlic is extremely amazing for the antibacterial and antiviral properties. So are a lot of these other things we're talking about. So you're gonna be okay. Though I'm sad for you because I love garlic so much. I'm sad. <laughs> Um, but I'm sure you've gotten over it. <laughs> oh, I bet you can probably like try and go get pizza or a pasta or something, go out to eat anywhere with your friends and family. Oh, I'm sorry, Kathy. <laughs> Another great ingredient I love to add are oranges. Uh, they're super rich in vitamin C. If you've been paying attention to any quality research out there about our current pandemic situation, you know that the intake of vitamin C is very important, along with the intake of vitamin D and some zinc. Um, I love to use oranges because oranges are delicious. They're a beautiful antiviral, very rich in flavonoids, and a fantastic antioxidant. You can absolutely replace the oranges with lemon or lime or grapefruit or whatever citrus makes you happy. Um, oranges make me happy. I definitely put the whole rind in there because I also use orange peel in some of my teas um, because they're rich in bitters. And I'm not sure if you've ever heard of bitters, but bitters help to get the digestive juices flowing from the liver, like your bile and such. I'm not implying that bitters make are like a laxative. They are not. They help you have healthy digestion and they're really fantastic for your liver. So that's why I use orange peel. They are a really, really fantastic source of bitters and oranges are delicious. So they definitely go into my fire cider. Cayenne pepper. I love things hot, 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 hot. Um, cayenne is amazing. So 
as we're heading into to the colder seasons, I live in a mountain town. I love to ski and snowboard. I love to play in the snow all the time. But it's a reality that sometimes you get cold. Um, your toes might get cold. Your fingers might get cold. And one of my favorite tricks to do with cayenne, because it's this amazing circulatory stimulant, is to put cayenne in my socks by my toes. And it helps to bring the flow of blood down to my toes and keeps your feet so much warmer. The other cool thing about cayenne is as it's such a great circulatory stimulant, it really helps to open up your capillaries. So I don't know. I use it in, in a product I make called Bobcat Balm because it helps to get all of the other medicinal constituents from the other plants I use in that product targeted to the space that it's put on. So just a, a little side note on cayenne. Um, it's also an amazing anti-inflammatory, both internally and topically, an amazing immune stimulant and a great expectorant. If you don't know what expectorant means, it just means it's gonna help you produce phlegm. Like if you are really congested or you're just, you know, that yucky feeling you'll get sometimes if you're sick, um, it helps you cough that stuff up. So. A really nice thing. I couldn't find any fresh cayenne peppers at the market, but I do have some really, really hot, hot, hot uh, dried cayenne that I'm going to put in here. I purchase my cayenne pretty much as hot as I can get it at 160 heat index units because it's what I use in my Bobcat Balm and I want it to work really well, but you don't have to go that hot. You can go as hot as you want it and you don't have to add cayenne if you don't want. You can add tons of it. You can add nuns of it, totally up to you. Turmeric, another beautiful, beautiful, beautiful little root. A lot of roots in this remedy here. Um, that is amazing, shocking, it's warming. It's an amazing anti-inflammatory, a great circulatory stimulant. It's fantastic for digestion. It's known to help with joint pain. Um, one thing to know about your turmeric is it's best taken with certain fats um, that helps it be more bioavailable. And when I say bioavailable, that means that your body can uptake the nutrients. Um, so it's really, really sweet for that. I find it funny um, being in the herbal and supplement industry. There are so many herbal companies that are extracting, and pharmaceutical companies for that matter, that are extracting the curcumin out of turmeric and like putting that in a pill or what have you, which is straight bonkers. I mean, they're making tons of money off of it. Or you could go make yourself a delicious curry dish and eat the food. Just a thought. <laughs> That's my disclaimer on that. It kind of chops my hide sometimes when I see people that take it all down just to pill form, but that's my personal bias. Um, turmeric's beautiful. If you haven't seen how beautiful it is, that's inside of one of the roots there. It's really, really so lovely. Brighter than sunshine even. So I'm tossing fresh turmeric into mine. I'm also going to put some turmeric powder because turmeric is the jam. Another one that I like, so that, let me, let me stop there. Um, those are the primary ingredients for your standard fire cider. Mix and match as you need. Um, that is fire cider in a basic box. And now is when you get to get even more creative and have a little more fun and think about other herbs you might consider putting into your remedies. So Echinacea is one of them. She's beautiful. She's a great flower to grow in your garden if you have a garden throw yourself some echinacea. It's just incredible me um, medicine. So it's really great as a lymphatic mover. So if you've got like swollen lymph glands, it's going to help move all that stuff through so that you can get over your sickness quicker. It's an outrageous immune system stimulant, almost so outrageous that like, so here's the thing with echinacea. Everybody knows it these days, right? You, you probably have used echinacea, I'm guessing. Go ahead and type it in the chat if you have or haven't. Let me know. Um, it's great, but it's really best used before you get sick. So let's say it's back to school time and you've got kiddos and you know that they're going into the Petri dish that is a school classroom. 
and they're going to end up snipply and coffee and stuffy. That's when you want to start getting echinacea on board. Let's say you're going to go fly somewhere and you're stuck in the cabin of a plane with people from all over the world that you don't know at all. Echinacea is a real good friend to have on board a week or two before then too. Louisa, you've never used it fresh. There's something so cool about about fresh echinacea. And I want you guys to know this really important trick with echinacea and to how to know that you have really great quality echinacea. And this does not apply to a pill form echinacea, which you can get some great quality pill form. But if you were to open it up, you could try this. When you put echinacea, flower, root, um, even the powder on your tongue via a tincture, the powder, or just you're chewing on it. If your tongue does not get crazy numb and tingly, you need to go get echinacea from somewhere else because that is one of the signatures of echinacea. It's like, it's just tingly. It's pretty awesome. I love the tingle because I'm like, ooh, I know I got good medicine. So a lot of people don't know that. And the sad reality is that today a lot of people a lot of companies are out there for their own interest and they will adulterate the herbal products that they're trying to send out there and you think that you're getting one thing but you're not. And it really chaps my hide because as an herbalist, as a person who truly believes that if more people use plants as medicine that we can make this world a healthier place for you and for our planet, knowing that there's people out there throwing out bunk herbal remedies just so they can make a dollar. And then there's the people that really need those herbal remedies, trying those crappy ones and not getting any benefits. And then starting to think that herbs don't work at all. And then they have to resort to more and more pharmaceuticals, which again, nothing against pharmaceuticals. They're really great when you need them, but they're definitely overprescribed in our country. And it's sad. It's really sad because now you can see them in our waters and our soils and anyways, that's a bit of a side rant. It chaps my hide. I want to make sure that you get good at herbal medicine in your life. Don't fall for the scammers. Okay? There's good stuff out there. And echinacea is cool. So are rose hips. <laughs> and rose hips are really rich in antioxidants. They are very high in vitamin C. So we're going back to that vitamin C that's known to boost the immune system. I mean, pretty sure all of our parents probably had us drink orange juice or eat oranges when we were sick as kids, right? Um, rose hips are also really rich in flavonoids and a fantastic immune strengthener. And yes, the rose hips come from your roses. If you grow roses in your garden and you don't use harsh chemicals and herbicides and pesticides, then you can take this beautiful fruit off of your shrubbery in the fall. Right now, the hips are starting to come out and you can put them into your fire cider. I am using full um, dried rose hips for my fire cider right now because um, that's what I have. But I just think it's super beautiful. They're really, really rich in vitamin C. Like you can almost taste it. Like if you've ever taken like they have those sugary packets of vitamin C and what have you. If you've ever taken something like that, you get this kind of bitter tingly thing that happens in your mouth as far as flavors go. And I can taste vitamin C now. Like I'm kind of aware of it. I think you could too if you, if you were paying close enough attention to it. Um, I like to use rose hips and make like this really good rose hip seed butter with it and spread it on apples. So I'll just um, take some dehydrated rose hips is how I do it. You could probably do it with fresh. Um, and I rehydrate them with some really good quality apple cider, some fresh pressed apple cider and let them sit for a bit. And then I blend that up really, really like but to a butter consistency and then spread it on some apples. And it's just a, a delicious snack. Um, yeah, rose hips. They're going into my fire cider. I hope they go into yours. Ooh, one thing about vitamin C that while we're on rose hips that I wanted to mention is that vitamin C one, it's awesome. We already talked about that. But if you heat these rose hips or things heavy and rich in vitamin C, once they get too hot, you're losing the vitamin C in there. And I wanted to share this because I didn't know this until a couple of years ago and I had already formulated a few teas with rose hips in them. And I decided, and I kept them in there after I learned this because tea, you know, you're pouring hot water over it. So like, boom, there goes your vitamin C. 
I kept them, the rose hips in there because they're beautiful and they're delicious. Um, I still love that flavor. It just gives a special little zing. But I wanted you to know if you're just journeying down the herbalist path that don't let the heat take away your vitamin C. That's all. <laughs> Another great thing is astragalus. Funny, funny word, fantastic root herb. It can be somewhat sweet. I get astragalus from a really lovely farm down in Grants Pass, Oregon called Oshala Farms. I love that farm. Anyways, it's uh, somewhat of a moistening herb, which can be really great if you are having a sickness where there is a dry, raspy um, throat or cough situation, excuse me. Um, that's when you want astragalus around. It can be really, really fantastic with that. And in your fire cider, it's going to be nice because a lot of these herbs we've talked about already are so hot that they're pretty drying. So to have another moistening herb to balance that out a little bit can be really, really helpful. Um, it's also a nice warming herb, an amazing immune system stimulant. Um, so much so that definitely if you or somebody you know and love has an autoimmune disease that they suffer from, you don't want them taking astragalus because you don't want their immune system to continue to attack itself even more. Um, it's a great antioxidant. It does a really wonderful job of protecting your liver. It is commonly used, well commonly, it is used sometimes for the treatment of cancer care. It can counteract or help balance out some of the harsh side effects and keep the liver in check from some of the, um, some of the pharmaceuticals that cancer patients need to be on. And um, I'm no doctor, <laughs> so don't take that as some kind of prescription for me for your friends with cancer, but it is a really, really interesting thing to to note that it has that kind of power. I just think herbs are really amazing in that way and go plants. <laughs> Time. It's really great. It's delicious and it's yummy and nutritious and it's a great circulatory stimulant and it's got a lot of antibacterial properties. It's an amazing antiviral. It's awesome for your coughs and congestion and sore throats. So one thing that I love to do that's so easy when you get sick and you're stuffy and congested and you just want to cry to your mommy is to take some time and maybe some other herbs and make yourself a steam. Super, super easy to do. So you just put the herb into your bowl and then you're going to pour some hot water over that herb and then put a towel over your head and you just breathe in the vapors and you do that for as long as you can possibly stand and it really helps to move all the stuff congestion there. And it smells yummy, it makes your whole house smell yummy. It's really, really great. Um, and I think thyme is delicious. So of course, I'm going to put a good bit into my jar of fire cider. <laughs> Rosemary, I so wish you guys were here with me and I was watching you create your jars because it's a lot of fun that way. <laughs> and I wanna see what kind of medicinal art you make because that's pretty much what's going on here but rosemary another favorite friend of mine rosemary is delicious of course if you don't think so you're kind of strange but that's okay i'm strange too so you could be loved even if you're strange but i love rosemary especially when it's nice and fresh it's known to help bring blood flow up to the brain and improve the memory and circulation all over which is sweet when i was going through clinical herb school we would have really really long days of studies with various herbal teachers and they were really intense and um we'd get breaks and it was in portland oregon and i would go for a walk every day on my break and I was so fortunate that so many people in Portland, Oregon love to grow rosemary shrubberies everywhere. So I'd walk along on my break and just grab a little sprig here and there, tuck it behind my ear, sniff it a bit. It's really nice. I use it in my Where's My Mind Tea just for that exact purpose and for its yumminess factor. Um, it's also very antioxidant rich. It's a great antibacterial. It is very warming and it's what's called diaphoretic. Do any of you know what the word diaphoretic means? You can say yes, you can say no. 
You can tell me because I'll, I'll tell you what it means anyways, but I'm just curious. No, that's okay. Don't be sad about it, Mel. I'm going to teach you. <laughs> then you can give me a happy face. It'll be great. Um, diaphoretic just means that it helps your body to sweat. So it promotes a sweat. So if you're somebody that's trying to release the heat from the body, say if you are having an extreme fever, <laughs> definitely steamy. Um, if you have a big fever, you might want to reach for diaphoretic herbs. So a lot of herbalism is a lot about lingo and verbiage and a whole nother language. So that's a piece of it right there. Diaphoretic helps you sweat. So a lot of these herbs we've talked about do have a lot of diaphoretic properties because they're moving so much of your blood and they're so warming that that is then going to promote a sweat. Crazy, right? Um, black pepper. Do any of you know why black pepper is so often, like when you're in a restaurant eating a salad and they say, would you like some fresh cracked pepper? Do you know why that is? Anybody? It is a diaphoretic, so it's going to help your body sweat. It is antimicrobial, so that's really cool. It's a great expectorant, so it helps release all the phlegm and congestion from the respiratory tract, which is so nice. It's awesome for the digestive system because it's very warming. And what is, ooh, salivate, it does help do that. Absolutely. So that's getting those digestive juices starting in action, which is super cool. Black pepper has the ability to increase your nutrient absorption and intake by over 400 times. So you're eating those greens in your salad and you're hoping for all that nutrient deliciousness, right? Or whatever other colors of food you're putting in your salad, but hopefully tons of colors. Um, use the black pepper because it's amazing in that way. And I like black pepper. I like it to come straight from the peppercorn. I like mine fresh cracked because the whole thing with all plants and all herbs, the more they're broken down, the more they lose their flavor and their effectiveness as a medicine. So just keep that in mind. If, if you're somebody who's ever drank any of my teas, oftentimes you'll find full flowers of, of, I think, absolutely beautiful things. I keep them that way for a couple of reasons. One, I want you to look at it and actually know that it's a beautiful plant that you're putting in your body that is helping your body feel better but also because I want it to taste good for a long time and I really want that medicinal benefit to stick around for a long time, way longer than the shelf life says. So um, full plants, black pepper. <laughs> I get onto tangents every once in a while, but hopefully they're tangents where you're learning something. I love beets. Do you love beets? I do. They really make fire cider beautiful. This time around, I've got some Chioga beets, which are the cool ones that kind of look like a bullseye. Um, they're not going to add as much epic color as a red beet would, but that's okay. They're still amazing. They're so vitamin rich. They can help. Um, oops, I'm sorry. They can help lower blood pressure. They are gorgeous. They're anti-inflammatory. They are rich in all kinds of vitamins like B9 and C. They've got folate and manganese and potassium and iron. Oh no, I'm doing weird things with my screen here. So pardon me, I'm trying to not do that. I'll get better, I swear. Um, and again, they're pretty. So I like to add all of that nutritional goodness because keeping your body full of great vitamins and minerals and other fantastic nutrients is also going to keep your immune system on able to perform better. So that's pretty awesome because we're here to make our immune system strong, right? The next one are jalapenos and I love hot stuff. I think I've said that a few times, but jalapenos are amazing. They're very warming throughout. Their flavor is delicious. They've got a lot of zinc. There's that good zinc stuff. You don't just have to take pills. You just gotta eat a lot of jalapenos for some people, maybe. Maybe you want, might want to get the zinc pills or what have you, uh, but they're rich in magnesium. They're rich in phosphorus. They're super flavorful and um, I love them. So I'm going to put a good bunch of jalapenos into my fiery cider. Can you see any of the colors in my jar? 
I hope that you guys, after if you're not making these with me right now, do me a huge favor when you make them. Will you take pictures of your jar and send them to me, please? Because I think it's so pretty and I'm having fun right now teaching to you online, but I want to see your jars. Show me your jars. Anyways. <laughs> Lemons are great in your fire cider too. They, of course, are rich in vitamin C. They can help soothe your sore throat. They've got some cooling properties to them, which anti-inflammatory technically means cooling because inflammation is hot heat. And if you're anti-heat, oh yay, Louisa, I'm so glad you're making it along with me. Will you send me your jar picture when you're done? I wish I could see it through here. That would be cool, but I don't know how to do that. Um, <laughs> yay. Yeah. So Louisa, are you adding lemon or are you doing orange? What are you putting in yours so far? Will you, will you put it in the chat? What you put in so far? Are you crazy like me and just putting in all the things? Lemon. Nice. Cool. Yeah. Keep it going. Let me know. I want to, I want to see. That's exciting. And cinnamon. I love cinnamon. Do you love cinnamon? It's so yummy. It's so warming. It's an amazing little friend for your digestive system and for your circulation. So if you think about it, I, I, I love that during the holidays and the fall, all the cinnamon and warming spices come out because they're actually warming your body. They are promoting circulation throughout your body and getting those fingertips and cold toes warm from that circulation. It helps to clear stagnation throughout your body and it's straight delicious. So cinnamon right now in my jar, I'll probably put some in because I'm crazy like that. But um, I think it would be a lot of fun to do a Christmas cider, right? Mmm, nice. nice. Cinnamon stick in the coffee in the morning. Yum. Actually, cinnamon in your coffee is, is an amazing way to start. Ooh, Luis has got rosemary, turmeric, ginger, cinnamon, onion, horseradish, cayenne. Exciting. That sounds amazing. Um, I'm putting full cinnamon sticks into my fire cider. And I want to pause for a moment and go off on a cinnamon amazing tangent to realize that this right here, this cool little curly cued thing there, if you can see that, comes from the bark of a tree. Like, I so badly want to go and see a cinnamon tree up close and personal. I just think about how many cinnamon trees must be out there to put all those pumpkin lattes and cookies for Christmas <laughs> out into the world. Like that's a lot of cinnamon. Is it really sustainable? I don't know. I don't know much about the tree itself. I just know how it's good medicine. So I love cinnamon. Cool tree bark. That's all. <laughs> oregano this is a pretty easy one maybe you got it in your kitchen cabinet a great antimicrobial and antifungal antibacterial antiviral it's so anti everything <laughs> can't you be more positive oregano no actually um i've worked with several herb teachers of mine where we try and come up with words that are not so anti and that are more, yes, this is happening um, and we don't have to be anti anything. And that's a whole nother class <laughs> at a whole nother time. Anyways, a um, lot of vitamins going on in your oregano, like the A and the B6 and the C and the E and the K. I feel like I'm gonna turn into a cheerleader doing the alphabet with you, but I won't, I promise. Um, great immune system stimulant. Oregano is another wonderful one that you can put into that herbal steam. Throw in the rosemary too. Why not? So you're basically like steaming an Italian dish. Kathy, this is something you could do with no garlic. You could still get that Italian satisfaction with oregano, thyme, and some rosemary into a steam. It's also going to make your skin feel really nice. So um, all kinds of benefits going on there. Yeah. And so... Those are some of my favorite ingredients that I like to play with and toss into my fire cider. Ooh, 
on the cinnamon, I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but I was starting to talk about it. I wanted to mention that it would be really fun to do a Christmas cider. So not so far fiery, but like heavy on the orange and the cinnamon, and then maybe just like some cayenne in there to give it a a little extra kick and then do a lot of honey like that would be a really yummy thing and you could even turn it into like a holiday mocktail mixer and add some soda water to it and you would be the coolest apple cinnamony cinnamon apple cinnamon orangey beverage haver at all your holiday parties if you can have holiday parties this year anyways to make your fire cider you throw all of those ingredients um into your jar as I've been doing this whole time. And then all you do now is pour your vinegar into your jar, like a so. And you wanna fill your jar all the way to the top so all the herbs and plants in there are covered well. And the more you fill it, the more you get later. So that's really cool. And it's really important if you're using a mason jar like me, I've got a lot of metal lids and such. So it's going to be really important to use a piece of wax paper or parchment paper to put in between your lid and your jar so that the apple cider vinegar, the acids in there, will not be able to um, eat away the metal of your jar. You don't want that in your medicine, right? That's a big no-no. And then you get it and you shake it, much like you would shake a Polaroid picture. Yes. <laughs> um, and you shake it with love. And if you're a nerd like me, you sing to it and you thank it for being great medicine and you shake it on the daily. Just come up, you're like, oh, there's the medicine I'm making. I'm just gonna shake it. I'm gonna give it a little twist, a little turn, sing it a song, do whatever you need to, to give it more love. Kind of like those organic farmers I talked about earlier. Um, and you're gonna let it sit for three to four weeks. Just hang out, doing its thing. And that's where it's macerating. And, and the apple cider vinegar is really able to intake all of those vitamins and minerals and nutrients and all of that awesome immune boosting goodness from those herbs that we talked about. So after your three to four weeks, you then strain the herbs. You can compost them if that's your jam, awesome. Um, and then you reserve the liquid and that's where you add your honey and you add as much or as little honey as you like try your darndest to find some raw honey so much better for you um, and then you're going to store it in a cool place you can put it in your fridge you don't have to put it in your fridge and you drink it as needed again you can use it as a salad dressing you can use it as a marinade for some kind of dish if you want you can just take straight shots if you're a maniac you can make a shrub so you could, like I was talking about the orange cinnamon thing, you could do this as like a spicy cocktail if that's your jam. Ooh, put it in a Bloody Mary. <laughs> Sorry, I was, I was a bartender for a very, very long time. So I have a lot of time, a lot of fun concocting things and making them taste great. And it's really great to take that skill set and turn it over to my world of being an herbalist. It's a lot of fun. So hopefully... You guys learned something here and you're excited to go out and make your own fire cider and maybe start learning to make your own herbal medicine. And I wanted to tell you, if you are interested in learning more about boosting your immune system, I am launching an online course. It starts next Monday and it's called Boosting Your Immune Strength and Resilience with Herbs. It's going to be a five-week course and you're going to have lifetime access to it. I'm going to teach you a lot of cool things. There are some of the herbs we'll talk about. You're going to get a brief overview of the immune system. You're going to get to know a lot of different herbs and what we just talked about right now. Today I was really focused on kitchen medicine because I know it's accessible to most people around our, our world. So. I wanted you to know that food is also very much medicine, but we're gonna go into a much deeper dive with some other immune boosting herbs where you'll learn how to use those herbs because they are not, not herbs are not equally interchangeable amongst every human body. 
And you need to learn which ones are right for which situation. So I'll teach you when to use the herbs. I'll teach you the best way to extract their medicinal benefits. So like, like I was saying, certain constituents and different herbs may be soluble in water. Some are in fats and some are in alcohols. Some are all, but we'll talk about those specifically to these immune boosting herbs and you will learn which herbs are the right herbs for you. So it's going to be a lot of fun. We're definitely going to go in much greater depth. And as I was saying, you have lifetime access to the five week course.